So what we talked about last time, basically, it was that whenever one side has a lot of space, it can be an advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage because we have to take care of all those squares inside our camp. And for that reason, what Black played in this game, Queen E8, it was completely wrong because after that, we don't have a queen anymore that we can use to, to enter and, uh, yeah, uh, bother white. And also, as we saw, Tony Miles in this game, he later on brought up his king. And it's obviously much easier to bring in the king if there are not queens on the board, right? So, uh, good move here, rook d8, trying to keep the queens on the board. Bad move, queen e8, because white is favored by the trade of rooks, of queens. Nice. Let's take an, an example from more modern time. Yeah, very welcome, everyone. This is the second and last installment on the topic of a space disadvantage. We are looking at different situations when having more space can actually be a disadvantage, contrary to what we learned, right? That it's good to have space and so on. Well, it depends. If you can control that space, if we can maintain it, then it's great, right? But sometimes that's not possible. We can, I think you say in good English, overextend. We can sometimes overextend ourselves. And uh, then we have a problem keeping track of all the space. We saw several examples last time. Should I bring those up or th that's not necessary, I think? Or should I just like very, very quickly uh, talk about it? Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, this was our first example. So uh, very quickly, guys. Yeah, let's do a quick recap here. Uh, everyone tell me Black's best move here. This was the most basic example, right? Aha, chess art, Yugoslavian, Gordon, chess player, Sui, Random, Khan, King, Sam, Michael Lee, Alg, Inari, Mecha, Mortis, Kwoki. You all got it. Oh, we have more people, actually. JM Chess, Princess Megan, Adi Chess, Tactical Magician, Awesome, Owen. We have <laughs> 206XX. Yeah, I can't uh, pronounce all that. So, chess art, you are the fastest here. All right, chess art. Uh, no mouse slip this time. What did Black play? This was the clearest case, right? We just said that if the queen is able to invade, it's fantastic. Now, white has a big problem here trying to keep control of all these squares that black is looking at. And later on, they also brought in the bishop, right? Uh, then what did we look at? Uh, let's see if I can do this quickly. Uh, what did we look at? We looked at the same position, but without queens. And we uh, established that white was... Very happy to have this position, right? This was last time, yeah. So white is very, very happy. The computer was saying big white advantage and so on. Aha. Then we looked at uh, Rublevsky is very nice uh, example. All right, this one I should definitely quiz you because here we can easily see if you have learned or you have not learned. So you get only 15 seconds for this one, all right? Yeah, Sarfak, no problem. Now you're catching up, no? Now you're catching up uh, from last time. So far, we're just repeating, by the way, from last time. Okay, Michael Lee, you're the fastest one. Chess player, Sui Random, 206. Change that handle, please. It's, it's very hard to pronounce all that. Yugoslavia Berserk or L, Gordon, Chess Art, Inari, Kwoki, Khan, King Sam, Awesome, Sartak, JM, Chess, Alg, Patriots, Charles, and Awesome Owen. All right, uh, Michael, you were the fastest one here, so please go ahead. What did Rublevsky play here? Exactly, queen e7. Right, a tactical magician, you can probably play queen d8 also. Nobody will complain about that. It looks slightly more uh, logical, queen e7, though. We talked about this last time because in the game, yeah, queen e7, we understand the idea, right? If I randomly play rook c1, Michael, what would happen, of course, uh, illustrating exactly the topic that we're talking about, right? That sometimes when we have more space, we can see white has plenty of space, at least in the center on the king side, but they have difficulties maintaining that space. So that's what uh, Rublevsky was aiming at in this game. Uh, in the game, they play g5, and uh, that's not the move that white wanted to play, because now f5 is not possible. So what did black play, Michael? Do you remember? And there you can see tactical magician, why it's good to have the queen on e7. Exactly, l008. Aha, that's right. Rook c2, and they brought the other rook to c8, and black was better. So that's what you should play. Queen e7, keep the queens, Try to infiltrate. What you should not play, of course, is queen c5. Don't think about that because white's king is closer to the center. Exactly what Miles did in his game, right? Bringing up the king. But since kings are, I mean, queens are still around, it's not so easy for, uh, yeah, you can see what happened in the game. Queen e7 and after uh, white played here, g5, 
Rook C2. Just so that we have this picture. I, I know not everybody like that we repeat things, right? But I just want to make sure that everybody understands what I'm saying. No? So once we have this kind of position, again, if you remove the queens, probably white is perfectly fine there. Uh, while queens are on, and that means that black's king is in trouble, right? So, yeah, queen c6, they played here, trying to play d4 and queen d5 and so on. All right, I think we should move on. Yeah, we did some um, repetition, and now I would like to show you what I have prepared for today. So, our next example, it's from last year, a uh, strong uh, Indian grandmaster, Sadwani with the black pieces, and uh, you can see some kind of King's Indian. I will kindly ask you to play out uh, Black's uh, best move here. Should I uh, play out a little variation, maybe? Yeah, I think f just for fun, no, just for fun, we will do the whole variation here. So, good luck, everyone. Take your time. One, ten. Okay. So I'd like to play and get a serious advantage. So we will also talk about flexibility in this example. Patriots and Daniel Best, you have that move in the pocket. If you play it now, I guess I'll play knight uh, back, right? I'll play knight fe2. Okay, L008, you're the first winner. Congratulations. Great work. Um, interesting move by Sarthak. Yeah, you could probably play like that. Uh, may I play Bishop F1, South like that. Um, okay, I like kebabs. You got it also. Second place. Congratulations. Uh, so all of those uh, who played... Yeah, I won't say anything because some people are still thinking here. Interesting move by Sui Random and Tiger Sahi. That's uh, in typical spirit of the King's Indian. But if... Sadwani didn't play it, there must be a good reason. Bishop f1, that's my gut feeling, Sui and the Tiger. That's my gut feeling. Okay, Kan Kim, Sang, Sam and Inari, you were very close. But uh, L uh, and I like kebabs, you're the winners here. So please go ahead, uh, L. Let everybody know. Infiltration time. I can't pronounce this word. Infiltration. Yeah, that's how you say it. So you can see what happened here, right? Black is very happy that the A-file is open. We got used to the queen invading, but this time it's the rook. We can see immediately there is this threat of rook takes and knight takes f3. Right. Uh, let's check. Before we continue, L, let's have a quick look at the other moves that were proposed here. So some people are saying knight takes d3. That's the typical move that we have in the pocket. Of course, black knew they could play like this at this point. I looked at this also. I'll take with a knight. Uh, so that when you play rook a3, I'm just in time to play queen b2. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that white is better or anything. I'm just trying to keep things under control. I, I don't like that I lost to bishop pair. I know that this pawn is a little shaky. But uh, yeah, it's the least of evils, right? You'll have to move the rook again. I'll maybe put my queen on b3 and I'll say it's not the best king's Indian in the world. But okay, I'm alive here, right? So it's possible to take, but uh, many of you notice that actually there is some kind of tactical dependency, right? The knight is uh, defending the bishop. And that, come, that leads to our next candidate move, g5. Some people are saying, I was thinking about knight e2, I could just defend. But actually, I could also play maybe knight h5. So I'm not sure what uh, would happen next here. Patriots, Daniel Best, Kwoki, and Princess Megan, you were proposing this move. But do I really like to be visited by that knight? Not so much. No, this guy is also hanging. So, um, wow. Interesting discussion about my feed rating is my puzzle rush record. How is that possible? Uh, puzzle rush is like 70 points? Something like that. Yeah, I don't follow. Anyway, yeah, interesting discussion. And I don't think there is a big relation or some relation between puzzle rush and the feeder rating, but it's it's a tiny part of chess, right? Uh, you don't need that speed if you have a 30-second increment, for example. But yeah, anyway, let's let's continue. Is there any other move that you would like to look at? F5 was also proposed. Yeah, I understand opening up the F file. Very clever. There might be some tactics coming up. I was thinking against all those moves of that kind that I would play Bishop F1, uh, hoping that I'm okay here with white. 
So if you take, I'm ready to take with a knight. Yeah, I think I'm I'm improving here. Um, we also had bishop h6, and I was thinking the same thing, that I could maybe play bishop f1. So yeah, back to business here, back to L. Uh, L said rook a3. That's a very pretty move. I must say I like it. Uh, geometrically, it's, it's a very pretty move. And let me tell you that actually white is lost at this point. There is no defense for white. Believe it or not, there is no defense. Um, if I play knight e2, with that knight, uh, L, you, you just play g5. Here, everybody understands what's, what's, what you're talking about. We have this in the pocket, right? Now there is no way they can save it. Uh, I looked at bishop d2 also, but uh, that's another unpleasant move. Actually, those of you who said f5, you will soon have get a chance here. We can take on d3. Uh, taking with the queen allows knight e5, and taking with the knight, it allows black to put pressure at these two pawns. So what would you play there, uh, L? d5, interesting. Yeah, maybe d5, but okay, white is well prepared on the... Uh, light on, on the diagonal. F5 says Sui. Yeah, maybe. Or you can start with knight b6 and then after they commit this pawn, I mean, they cannot really play like, like this, right? That's perfect infiltration. Now we have many pieces already now attacking in white's camp. So they would have to defend the pawn in some other way, like knight e2, for example. And here is the move that um, uh, who said this? Uh, Sui, random, and uh, Tiger Sahi were talking about this. Of course, yeah, this is what every King's Indian player knows. Uh, yeah, uh, please go ahead, uh, Sui. What would uh, you play here? Let everybody know Black's best move here. Well, well, what happened here? Here we are. Yeah, please go ahead. Of course, if we get a chance to play a five, fantastic. Yeah, we, now all the pieces are dancing here. So that's a difficult position for Black. Rook a3. Uh, let's see the game then. Um, yeah, let's see the game. By the way, sorry, uh, who was talking? It was L, right? L, we forgot to talk about this. Yeah, 92. You win a pawn, I think, here, L, right? If I'm not mistaken. I would like to play like this to defend the knight. Unfortunately, now I lose the pawn instead. Exactly. So back to business. Rook a3, very pretty move in the game. White played queen b2. And this uh, leads to a little combination. Rook takes e3 about forks and, uh, well, not so much forks, no, about pins and about deflection, I think. So white must take with the rook. And here comes our favorite move, g5, when we're about to take on d3, exploiting the pin along the long diagonal. So, yeah, it's very difficult for white. In the game, they played queen d2. We had some time ago, we had some sessions about uh, contrasting teams, right? So one of the teams was uh, two minor pieces, and another team is rook and pawn. You can clearly see that this is a bad position for the team of rook and pawn, and it's very good for the minor pieces, because there are a lot like weak squares and so on. The king is a little weak. So, uh, yeah, he didn't have any problems. Uh, Sadwani, how do we get the bishop pair? Anyone? 96, that's right. Rook c2. Thanks for the bishop pair. After that, you can see that white's dark squares are even weaker. Moves like queen b6. We have them in the pocket. First, he played here knight e5, bishop f1, knight e6, queen d2. And if I forced everyone to play a pawn move here, just for fun, if you had to play a pawn move, what would you play? Oh, f5. Yeah, if you play f5, I guess I take it and I play bishop d3. Nobody says the move that uh, Sadwani played. Okay, Sarthak. Please go ahead, Sarthak. Uh, you found it after uh, a while. What should black play here? So I hope this comes natural to you guys. Remember that when you have two pieces versus rook, weakening squares and so on it doesn't matter anymore right there is no white knight that will settle on d5 instead the idea of c5 of course is to bring a bishop to d4 so things change a little when we have this team of minor pieces so complete nightmare for black uh, for white i mean uh, black went on to win please notice the first move here if you didn't get it well let's be nice to everyone i'll give you just uh, 20 seconds to find the whole variation again, right? Walk in, uh, who was it? Uh, L's uh, foot, oh, sorry, that's a bad move. Walk in L's footsteps. Yeah, th this is enough. All right, here we go. Yeah, F5 should also be okay, Sartak, you're right. 
But I think C5 is nice. Yeah, a lot of winners. L, Gordon, Chessart, Inari, JM, Chess, Connor, Yugoslavian, Sui, Kwoki, Chess player. I like Kebabs, Michael Lee, Charles Hua. Exactly. So, yeah, great work. Uh, we start with Rook A3, right? And our second move. Um, yeah, by the way, what happens if you play G5 on move 2? Interesting. I didn't look at that. Why didn't he play like that? Wow. Uh, well, there, there can't be many moves, right? I have to play uh, queen takes, I guess. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Maybe there is some like some move like ninety five or something. Hmm. I'm not sure, but I think there is some ninety five coming up. Uh, yeah, these guys they, they don't miss a tactic. Knight f d five first. Oh, yeah, probably, probably. Good point by who said that. L. Yeah, you're right. That's probably why he didn't play it. Clever thinking. Then we can maybe take. And if they take, L is ready to take like that. Of course. And we're taking on D3. Nice. Isn't not knight takes D3 though? Says tactical magician. How? When are you going to play that tactical? Here. I mean, I'll take anyway, right? Or am I missing something? Instead of taking... No, you have to take, I guess. Else I'll just take on A3. Yeah, so I think uh, it's better the other move order, right? It's better the other move order to take first, like Sadwani did, and then play g5 and we pick it up. Yeah, move orders. We did some tactic also. Nice. Don't forget the picture. Rook a3, invasion on the third rank. Let's bring up our next example. This game is from the United States uh, with the white pieces uh, Justin Paul and playing black Andrew Tang. Yeah, that's a... Well-known grandmaster, uh, very good in uh, in fast chess, right? In in one minute and so on, two minutes, uh, very very fast. So here we have some kind of what should I say, hedgehog structure, but not really a, a pleasant one for white. As you can see, we missed this uh, C, C pawn, right? So we actually we don't have much more space. Black already achieved the B five break, uh, so yeah, not so pleasant uh, position for white. But it's about fairly equal here. Um, so white should be a little careful. Uh, we also don't have the light square bishop. So the king, if the position opens up, the king might be a little unsafe. In the game, white played f4. That was not a good idea. Now it's your turn, guys. I would like to know how you think we can exploit this situation and get uh, a big advantage with the uh, black pieces. All right. So here we go. You get one minute. How can we undermine White's uh, space advantage here? I see Chessort and L. I guess I take it. Uh, the same goes for you, Sartak. I take it. I take it. You play knight f6. Maybe I go queen f3. Oh, everybody's saying that. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Maybe you were inspired from the previous example. Yeah, you can probably play like that, but Andrew Tang played something else. He noticed something. Please notice, guy, there is something about this uh, knight, no? It's something about the knight on b7. That's a mystery piece, the knight on b7. Something's happening with that knight. All right, Sui and Princess Megan, you got a little closer than the rest. Skilled Saber, we have a first winner. Congratulations. Great work. Knight d8, interesting maneuver by Tactical Magician. And if I take that pawn, Tactical, what do you have in mind? Aha. All right, we have four winners. Skilled Saber, JM Chess, Kwoki, and Tiger Sahi. Congratulations. Skilled Saber, you're the fastest one, so please go ahead. What did you notice here? Aha, this guy, it's usually not on b7, right? That's the bishop's place in these structures. But OK, it happened to be there. So d5, that's exactly what white, what black played in the game. And after e takes d5, what did black have in mind? Of course, somebody very clever said about chess in general, that chess is so difficult because you can understand many things well, but it's difficult, difficult to find them. So anyone shows you this variation and you will say, of course, of course, we will land the knight on c4. But if I look at the statistics here, 
from I don't know 30 how many are here 4 9 14 19 24 20 well many I, I lost count here already 5 10 15 20 yeah I, I don't know but about 35 maybe oh we have only four students like 10 percent who get it right here with d5 so chess is difficult no chess is difficult it's easy to understand it but it's difficult to, to see it so yeah let's go back to who was it skilled saver yeah all right skilled rook d3 was played in the game exactly and it's time to bring our knight to c4 very beautiful picture uh, already white has big problems in this position in the game they played bishop c1 trying to cover the square on e3 if i ask you skilled saber from all your pieces uh, which one do you think can be improved quickly from all your pieces which one would you like to bring a little closer to the battle Look careful, exactly. Oh, well, no, I won't say exactly because the rook was already active on this side, right? But you can probably play that also. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad move. Uh -huh. In the game, they played a knight move instead, uh, skilled. They played a knight move. So, which of the knights would you like to improve here? Exactly. This knight was not doing so much. Now it's getting ready to take the pawn or maybe jump in on e4. So, queen f3, black played knight xd5, and they had. Big advantage here, knight xd5, pawn xd5, rook xd5. And here, Andrew Tank played a very nice rook move. So anyone, if I force you to play a rook move, to make a rook move, which rook move would you make? Wow, rook takes a3, how can you play that? Interesting. I get the point, of course, but does it really work? Alg, you got it. Okay, Alg, please go ahead. You're the only one who found the move, I think. What did he play? Exactly. Rook e7. Rook a7 in order to go rook e7. We should do it that way, not the other way. Because in that case, I think this guy is hanging. Maybe I can take on, on b5 or something. No. Maybe that's not so clear. So it's better like Alg is saying. Rook a7. Bring the rook to e7. Black had a lot of pressure and they went on to win this game. Yeah, you're saying rook takes a3. What do I think about that? Well, if somebody sacrificed something against me... My first impression is always to take. So I guess what you had in mind. Yeah, what did you have in mind, by the way? All of those who said uh, rook takes a3. Rook e3, says Michael. Yeah, okay. So I guess if you play that, I should play rook d8, right? I should look for counterplay. And uh, you have to play bishop f8. And uh, I don't know what's, what's going on here. Uh, something's hanging here, something's hanging there. If I don't get mated, I play queen a8, no? Yeah, exactly, Michael, yeah. So if they take, yeah, king to the corner and... I think it's black who is in trouble here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Or do you mate me or something, queen f2? Oh, is that mate? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's white who's mating, probably. Who, who is good with tactics here? Yeah, yeah, I don't think this works, right? I think white is mating. But uh, I might be wrong, no? I I'm seeing... Oh, no, that's a terrible mouse slip. Sorry. I'm seeing the king will go this way, right? And we have rook g1 in the end. No? Oh, you made me queen takes d1. That's beautiful. Great calculation, guys. You calculate very well. I, I didn't see this. Yeah, nice. But I think there is a flaw somewhere, right? It can't be like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have some hands, uh, hands up here. Yeah, I don't know. This should be winning for white somehow, right? Maybe not. Maybe we went too far. Queen c5 after king h5. That sounds promising. That's right, uh, Gordon. That's what we call good technique. Now we managed to trade off. <coughs> Sorry. Trade off the queens. Uh, yeah, nice. Uh, tactical magician, you're raising your hand. What, what would you like to share with us? Please go ahead. So instead of um, the idea with rook e3, is there not knight e3 check? Uh, yeah. Check. I'm by intuition. I would play here king h1. So what do you have in knight mind takes, here? Knight takes. Knight takes where? Uh, d1. Knight takes d1. Okay, I guess I should take back. Rook e3. But I have a long and strong move here. I think uh, I attack and I defend, right? So you have to move the bishop, and I don't know if I can just recycle the previous line. Um, I don't know. Is, is this good for, for black, really? Well, you're good with calculation, so 
you should know. I will uh, I will copy the variation from who said this? G Gordon's variation. Yeah, I, I will trade the Queens in the end if you play like that. So I don't believe in this. Yeah, interesting variation. Thanks anyway, tactical. That's an interesting variation. So back to business. Let's not get lost in details. Let's stick to the subject about the space disadvantage. White played f4 and black took the opportunity to strike in the center. It's a typical idea in the hedgehog structure in general. No, some people are saying f5. I mean, I like the move in, in principle. No, we open up the e-file and so on. I guess I can take. You'll have to play knight f6 and I come back with queen. I guess you would take, and I don't know, could I play something like knight e4 perhaps? I'm touching a little here and a little there. And again, we have this problem knight, which is not uh, helping us so much. So I don't believe in f5 in this uh, particular case. Uh, I believe in what uh, L said, no? d5 and play knight d6. So that's how, how the game went. Uh, bring the knight to c4, infiltrate, black uh, has a bigger advantage. All right, I wanted to ask you something else. After f4, d5, in the game, white could also have considered the move e5, right? Is that so? So if this happened, I would like to know how you guys would continue with the black pieces, all right? But this is so easy, so I, I give you just 45 seconds. I won't take there. Uh, um, who, who said this, by the way? <laughs> Daniel, I won't take on f on f6 in that case. Uh, all right, I like kebabs and Michael, you got it. Uh, interesting maneuver by Alg. Oh, a lot of people want to maneuver here. Wow, you really like maneuvering, right? The knight is dancing. Um, if I go queen f3 there, all those of you who said knight d8, that's a big group of people who said knight d8. If I go queen f3, trying to play g4, what do you do against that? Yeah, you maneuver and I rely on cheap tactics, right? Uh, Anigo, you also got it. Yeah, we have three winners here. So please go ahead. Uh, I like kebabs. Which was your move here? What did Black play? So very typical uh, method. Very important to know this. Pump break. In this way, we open up the game for... Yeah, all our pieces become happy here. Almost all of them, right? Uh, if White takes... We can take back, and here one big consequence of all this is that suddenly the d6 square is again um, available for us, right? So this looks terrible for, for white. So I don't know how they can avoid this. I mean, if they go e6, it's not a big improvement, right, uh, Kevabs? You can just pick up the pawn, I think, here without any issues, right? Or am I missing something? Yeah, maybe there are many moves here, but I, I would guess just a five and take the pawn, all right? Um, f5, some people were saying, but I have no reason to take, right? I would play queen f3 there. And careful, I have g4 coming up. The same goes for knight d8. Those of you who played that, you're good at maneuvering, but sometimes you have to act quickly, right? I would play queen f3 here, and as I was saying, now there is the threat of g4. So I don't see how this works for black, really. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay, chess sword and can king Sam, you're... Raising your hand, uh, what happened? After f6, I go f5. I don't uh, follow, really. No, like, it was in the other position. So. Oh, in, in which one? Like, after not d5, but f5. After not d5, but f5. Okay, so after f5, here, you mean? Yeah. And if I well, take... And if you play knight f6, queen f3. Mm-hmm. And then you, uh, I think you go rookie three. Oh, you had rookie three there. Interesting. I didn't see that. Uh huh. I have to play queen f two, I guess. And then I thought about doubling the rooks up. Oh, nice. I like the spirit to bring in all the pieces and so on. Yeah, looks very nice. I don't know. Could, could I like trade rooks here, or or do I run into some nasty tactic if I do that? Maybe I have some move, move like that coming up also, right? I played that, but it said it was wrong. Okay, we have to sue Chessable here, Princess Mega. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there might be more than one correct uh, 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 question, by the way. Uh, answer, by the way. So what did you play, Princess? Uh, let's see. I can see that here, of course. Um, 
Wow. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find uh, a lot of people today. I can't find the Princess Megan's answer. Uh, do you remember what you played? Uh, yeah, we have, must have multiple answers. Yeah, I, I agree, Tori Chess. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, here I found it. Oh, you played Rookie 3 straight away. I see, I see. Yeah, we'll talk about your solution. Again, F4, very risky move. It gives Black a chance to play D5 and give the Knight a great future here. So this is how the variation uh, went after the move Rook D3, Knight C4, Rook E3. When, when did that happen? Oh, we're talking about something else now. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm getting confused here. No, no, we're talking about this variation. Yeah, I see what you mean, Princess. So you said... Here you said the move rook e3. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm saying that we should play knight e6. Yeah, good question. I can't uh, really give you a good answer. I would say that if this really wins something, if, if it has some concrete gain, I'm with you. But else, if you play this, you might actually make things too more complex for yourself, right? Because the queen is like undefended, all right? So if you play knight e6, maybe, I think we talked about this recently or something similar. I would consider to play rook d3 and I'm hoping to play bishop c1. So I don't know if that's a good explanation, princess. You play knight c4, I will play bishop c1, that's for sure. So what are you going to do next? Rook takes d3, all right. We have some kind of trade uh, situation here. You take back, I take... Um, by the way, if you talk about a lot of different things in the chat, I cannot catch up with Princess uh, Megan's messages, for example. So maybe stick to chess instead, right? This should be about... Uh, yeah, black is better for sure. Yeah, I, I, w I won't say it's about equal. No, black is for sure much better here. Uh, and somebody noticed some intermediate move here, right? Is that what you meant? Aha, nice, nice. Uh, JM Chess, for example, said that we can actually take here first. Yeah, that's a very bright uh, tactical answer. So... Uh, good point. Yeah, good point by all of those who said uh, rook e3. I like it. I like it. I must say it comes more natural to me just knight e6 because I feel like I have more options here. But uh, yeah, looks nice also rook e3. So consider yourself winners if you play that move. Yeah, white's minor piece is total disaster. So again, this is a st fairly strong player with the white pieces, 2400, who played here the move f4. He must have forgot about black's dynamic potential here. So uh, sometimes before you grab space, careful, careful that uh, there might be problems on the sky. All right, let me show you a similar example. Uh, by yeah, we have two strong grandmasters here uh, from this uh, modern times. Let's see if I can bring it up. Um, all right, so. Here we are. This is a game between Vohidov with white and Nihal with the black pieces. So you can see it's a little similar, right? White has a lot of extra space on the board. These three friends, they have already advanced to the fourth rank, and this is a typical move also in this structure. However, black is very solid. You can come across this kind of position in a Philidor. I think it's not a Philidor, but it looks a little like a Philidor. No, it cannot be King's Indian because the pawn is on C2. Anyway, yeah, b2 is undefended. Yeah, that's a good uh, observation by Kite King Sam. So I'll quiz you for Black's uh, next move here. I don't think it's very difficult uh, for you guys. So let's quiz you for the next three moves here. This should not be too difficult. All right. So how do you think Black should continue here? Black is certainly having less space. However, their position is very solid and they will soon start undermining White's center. Oh, interesting. Can you play like that? Sui, 206, Kang King Sam, Michael Lee, Mecha Mortis, I like Kebab's Princess Megan, Skilled Saber Connor. Everybody wants to play like that. I think you're copying, copying the previous game. Uh, interesting. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I can maybe take it or, or something bad will happen to me. I could also advance the pawn, perhaps. But then you play f6, probably, like in the previous example. So I'll have to take it, I think. Adi Chess, we have a winner here. Congratulations. Only winner so far. Only student capable of following in Nihal's footsteps. That's Adi Chess. Aha. Uh -huh. We have a lot of other moves here. Yeah, you gave me many moves on this occasion. But 
very few people. Oh, so Owen, you're also very, very close. Aha. Uh -huh. In chess, odds line after rook d3, rook takes it 2 Are we back in the... <laughs> Don't tell me we're in the previous example. Okay. I, I would be very nice and I will go back then, all right? But uh, if you didn't chat so much about other things in the chat, it would be easier for me to keep track of what you're actually saying. Uh, okay. Let's be... Uh, let's see if I can find it in the first place. Let's see. Uh, was this the example? This was the example, right? Okay. I've been talking about that for like five times. Okay, kind King Sam. You can have the... You Would you like the, the pieces? You can have white and you can have black. All right? Please go ahead. Show us the variation that uh, we should look at. Okay, F5. Oh, it's hanging on B2 in the end. Okay, interesting. Uh, I get the point. You're probably right. Yeah, we didn't see that uh, for the rest of us. I see what you mean. Great discovery by Kai King Sam. Congratulations. Yeah, this line is trash, says Metsa Mortis. But why? I, it seems to work, right? One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I'm, I won't resign at this point with white, but I do have some troubles here. But let's check it a little more carefully. So... We had this position. Perhaps my move was very bad. What if I play bishop c1 straight away, Kang King Sam? Maybe now I have a chance to move the rook and uh, do some harm to you. Rook d6? Oh, rook takes d6. Oh, I understand. Interesting, yeah. But, uh, okay. Waiting, uh, Kang King Sam. Waiting for your reply. d5, says Michael. So if you play d5 and I go rook d3, what am I missing? Yeah. Annoying, no? Annoying move rook d3. Maybe you can retreat the queen. I think maybe that's what you should do. Put the queen somewhere, like queen, queen c7 or something. But uh, that was not what we intended, right? And Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. If I'm white, I, I guess I'll just pick up the pawn now if, if there is nothing better. So... White is struggling, but we have an extra pawn and so on. 95, says Michael. 95? With, with, with which piece is Michael? I like 95. I don't understand anything. 95 with white, you mean? No, I, that can't be uh, before queen c7. Before queen c7, 95. So it means here. How, how can that work? I don't follow. No, but I won't. I won't uh, play that. No, no. Okay, thanks, uh, King, King Sam. I'll take back the pawns. I won't play like that. I, I won't. That's a bad blunder. Now you have a bad pawn structure. Your knight is uh, worse than ever. Let me pick up this pawn before I forget about him. So you take back, and yeah, I play any move here. Rook c2, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, what's going on here? I think you managed to destroy this uh, beautiful position, no? Um, white is winning. Well, if not winning, at least uh, white is having the upper hand. Yeah, let's not discuss that. D instead of knight x4, rook takes. Instead of knight x5, rook takes d5. D4 says Michael. But we cannot continue forever, Michael, to look at this position. If you, you have to assess also. No, that's something, guys, that we should all remember, right? Uh, sometimes in a game, uh, we should stop calculating and try to assess the position, right? To evaluate how are we doing, uh, who is better and so on. Else we will calculate forever and we will run out of time. So this, for example, if black takes and we play queen f3, this is a good moment to assess what happened here. Okay, black has a passed pawn, but white has exchanged up and the knight is, is a little sad and light squares are weak and blah, blah, blah. Something like that, right? Bad knight down exchange. Yeah, I like that uh, way of summing up uh, Kind King Sam. So I think we should move on, right? I think we should move on. I think we understood this one. What uh, Andrew Tank played was very uh, natural and very strong. D5, trying to bring the knight to C4. Uh, we're happy to give up a pawn to get the knight to this juicy square. And if they play E5, well, we won't think twice about pushing F6 before they get a chance to play something like queen f3 and g4. No f5, please, because in that case, white is happy that the position is closed now, while if we play f f6, we manage to open it. All right.
So back to business, back to Nihal. We were talking about this position. I already lost, yeah, since you interrupted me, I, I forgot completely who, who got it right and who got it wrong. It was Adi Chess, I think. Adi, you're the one who got it right. No? Yeah, it was you. Yeah. Okay, Adi, back to, back to Adi Chess. Let's now turn the page and talk about this position instead. So white has more space, but black is able to create counterplay. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Adi. It's your move. B5. If we can play that, we should play it, right? Here you can see also the difference between a structure like a Marox structure. It's a little more difficult for black to push B5, but in a Philidor structure or call it what you like, or like a small Maroxi, then it's much easier. So B5, B4 is coming up. White took on B6. Black took back. And after Queen D2, it was not difficult for Adi Chess to find Black's next move here. Those of you who play the Sicilian are very familiar with this also, of course. B5, we want to push B4. Once we push B4, sometimes we can go C5 because then they cannot play Knight D5 anymore. Nice. So that's how the game went. White played in the game h3 and i think we will stop here i mean not not stop the session but we will uh, now ask you for black's best continuation all right so quiz time again let's see if we can get this right um it's the third move which is very important all right go for it guys let's see how you can increase black's uh advantage here all right well advantage i don't know but black's initiative we'll say Okay. Sarthak, you're very close. Chess player 33 and Princess Megan, congratulations. You have found it. Connor, you also found it. Great work. Gordon, I like kebabs. Patriots. Yeah, if you play C5 first, what's the difference? Uh, and by the way, some people said D5 in the very beginning. We will come back to that also. Aha. So a lot of people say c5 on move three. We have like a tie between these two options. And actually, I'm not sure the big difference. But if Nihal played the other way, I would bet my money on his move. Uh -huh. um, OK, so a lot of people want to play c5. A lot of people want to play d5. And we have some other moves also. Interesting. Uh -huh. um, all right, time's up. Chess player, you're the fastest one. So please go ahead, chess player. How did uh, the Indian prodigy continue here in this position? So before, now we can see that the knight is kind of in a bad place because the rooks are also, uh, they have to be connected. So white took first and then they put the knight on d1. I think black still had, white had some hopes of attacking or something like that. But here comes key move here, d5. Now it's time for this key move, d5. But of course, we should talk a little about other possibilities here. Um, in the first place, some people were saying d5 already here. I didn't understand this completely. I didn't understand it completely. I wanted to ask you if I take on d5. All of those of you who said d5, what did you plan next? Okay, I don't get any answers. <laughs> I mean, I, I like your concept of opening up the position, but chess is also a concrete game, right? It's not as in the other example. We don't have a knight to bring to the center and so on. So not sure. P pawn takes, knight takes, must favor white. So I'm with Nihal here. B5, I like that way better. Um, after pawn takes, pawn takes, queen d2, making space for the pieces there. Um, by the way, had white played... Um, yeah, no, let's, let's continue. Queen d2 and b5, white played h3, prophylaxis on the king side. B4, rook takes, rook takes, 91. So some people are saying C5 here. I like it. I like the move C5. You make space for the bishop also. Why didn't he play like that? Good question. What would white play? Let's think about it for a little while. Bishop C4, is that possible? Do you allow me to play that? Maybe that's helpful for me, you know? Uh, no, Morocco is in Africa, by the way, if we talk geography. Aha, Bishop C4, weak light squares. I agree. Not so clear, not so clear. We have it in the pocket, the move C5, but maybe it's better to keep it for later. D5 was played in the game. Okay, if E takes D5, anyone, what do you think uh, Nihal had prepared? 
How could you take advantage of the opening of the D file, guys? C text D5. Yeah, that's highly possible because now the knight cannot go there anymore. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Tori Chess. Queen takes. Uh, oh, we wanted to play like that, but then we're hanging this pawn. So Kan King Sam is saying rook D8 instead. Yeah, and that's what I think also. That's probably a stronger move. So I don't think white is doing well in this position. I don't think white is doing well. If pawn takes... I don't know if you would take this guy or you would take that guy. But okay, to keep things simple, maybe just take this one. Maybe then we can like put the bishop here and we're threatening a little here and we have some stuff going on with queen c6 also. Uh, oh, we also have that square, right? Yeah, now we're talking infiltration, right? We have many ways to infiltrate in this position. Yeah, I wouldn't like to play white in this position for sure. So yeah, that's what could happen if white takes on d5. In the game instead, Vohidov played the move e5. All right, guys, let's see if we have learned our lesson today. Let's see if you can find Nihal's very nice uh, continuation here. He found a very nice tactic in this game. So, okay, I'll give you only 45 seconds here. Uh, all right. C5. I'll take on d5, uh, Daniel, if you play like that. I'll accept your sacrifice. Uh, Patriots and L. I'll accept your sacrifice also. I'll take that with a queen, I think. Okay, consider yourself winners, Yugoslavian Berserker, Alg, and Gordon. That's very, very close to what he did in the game. Adi Chess and JM Chess, the same goes for you. Connor, we have our first winner. Congratulations, Connor. You have walked in the footsteps of Nihal. Great work. And then we have a million other uh, propositions here. But I think for time reasons, we have to focus a little on the most relevant ones. So we have three winners Connor, Mecha Mortis, and Skilled Saber. Please go ahead, Connor, which was uh, your solution here. Exactly. The same thing as last time. Uh, I must ask you also, Condor, did you notice that there was actually a line like this? Did you see that one? Yeah, I'm sure you did, right? Else you wouldn't have said this. So please go ahead, Connor. Whenever they sack something against you, first reaction is to exactly to accept. And yeah, Black is probably winning here, right? We can play for mate and so on. So that's a cheap tactic that Nihal for sure noticed when he played uh, F6. Notice that maybe if the pawn was on G2 instead, I'm just uh, guessing, no? If the pawn was on G2, maybe then actually E6 would be a good move for White. Uh, so yeah, they're paying again. They're paying for, for their space advantage, so to speak. So E takes F6 was played in the game. Black takes back with the bishop, of course. And White, like they say, no, if you're suffering, take, take something to suffer with, a pawn, for example. But then there was this very pretty tactic by uh, Nihal. He played here the move D4. So what's going on here? Well, uh, he would like to push C5 also, which was not possible in this position. And, and of course, he must be a little careful that White is not able to set up a blockade or something. So he plays D4. And after Bishop takes D4, the next move is not difficult to see. Maybe you didn't have time, uh, Connor, to look at this move. Uh, but uh, yeah, the move is very obvious. No, the move is very obvious. Exactly, Knight takes. All right, thanks, Connor. I'll take back the pawn because I would like to have a little um, quiz for you guys. Knight c3, now quiz on cheap tactic, our favorite topic. Let's see if anyone can see the neat tactic uh, used by Nihal in this game. Yeah, very pretty, very pretty. But you're good at this, so I don't think you will have any troubles. Cheap tactic, yeah, for sure. Pretty tactic. Uh, puzzle rush, uh, all those puzzle rush experts, I hope you will find this in... 10 seconds. Uh, I'm sorry if you play like that, uh, Chess Art, Quoki, Princess Megan, and so on. I'll take and you take and I take. Yeah, you got to, you got carried away there. Nobody found the tactic so far. Nobody has found it. Wow. Was it that difficult? Yeah, we'll see.
Oh uh oh, this was not so easy. I didn't get a single winner. <laughs> so let's uh, talk about this. Let's talk about this. Uh, we played e4. We took on f4. Knight c3. Now I cannot follow the chat. Yeah, I will request. I will just tell you guys because everybody is saying the same thing here. Wow, so many people are saying that. Nobody got even close. No, no. So you're all saying uh, c5. And then you're saying queen takes c5. So I'm saying that I'll take on c5. And when you take on c3, I'll take on f4. And I'm claiming that I'm still alive, right? So I think we missed something. We missed something. OK, I can see the answer in the chat also. So OK, you get a new chance. But now I will only give you uh, 30 seconds, all right? Now you get only 30 seconds for this, uh, because I can see that some of you got it already. So. Uh, 30 seconds, where is the cheap tactic that nobody could find? <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, okay, one group who got it and the other group, they didn't get it. Yeah, confusion, complete confusion. If you take on d4, I take back and uh, what, what did you expect to do there? Uh, okay, we'll talk about it. Tactical Magician L, I like kebabs, match and mortis, chess player skill, Saber, Yugoslavian, Berserker, Kind King, Sam, 206, JM Chess, Tiger Sahi. Congratulations, you all got it right on your second attempt, though. Uh -huh. Expensive tactic. Yeah, you could probably say that. It was a difficult tactic. Okay, Tactical Magician, please go ahead. Uh, and if you said it first in the chat, uh, those who, who said it, said, that's your problem, right? The chat is not for telling the moves. You can propose moves and so on but not for telling the solution. All right, uh, tactical. C5, it's the attraction. I think we call this, right? We track the piece to the C5 square. I cannot take with the bishop, right? Tactical. Then I'm running into some problem here on E2. So I have to take with the queen. That's how the game went. And here comes the neat tactic by Nihal. Retreating moves. That's what sometimes it's difficult for chess players, but not for Nihal. In this case, we are hitting the bishop and the queen. White had to take on C7. In between move, and then we take on c7. Yeah, great work, uh, tactical magician. So that's the solution. If you played here, some people were saying now bishop takes d4. I don't know what, what you were expecting here. Um, don't tell me you were trying to play like that, because I can counter this in different ways, right? Uh, well, not so many ways, but I could take on f4, I think. And careful, I have my own chip tactics here, so I don't think this is the right solution. Yeah, it's not a cheap tactic if we, if we can't do it. You're right, Princess Megan. I, I agree with you. If nobody could get it in the first try, then it's probably not so cheap. It's like somebody said, it's an expensive tactic instead. Yeah, interesting uh, way to put it. So I think we understood this example, right? When our opponent has more space, we try to undermine it. In this case, we could use our pawns to do that. The pawn went further, and then we had the same d5 push as in the other game, the, the d5 push and trying to open up the game. All right. I'll bring up a last uh, last example. Uh, we have a few minutes left, so let's uh, see this very interesting game. Two of the best players in the United States. Well, uh, what else could we say? Uh, speaking of Fabiano Caruana with the black pieces. Uh, this is a typical case, right, of our topic. You can see white has more space. Nobody can deny that. Uh, Caruana is sitting with all his pieces on the last three ranks. And it doesn't even look like a hedgehog, right? We don't have a fancy bishop on g7, for example. But OK, this bishop is not so bad either. So there are two ways we could talk about this. We could talk about what Caruana played, and we could talk about what the computer wanted to play. So I think I will quiz you, and we will see who picks Caravana's move and who picks the, the computer move, all right? But uh, I think in this case, the computer's move is stronger, so I will keep that move as my uh, main line, all right? So here we go. I give you one minute. Try to see how you can undermine. How can you undermine White's uh, space advantage here? So Patriots, you are walking in Caravana's footsteps. Congratulations. Patriots and the Tiger Sahi. Great work. That's what Caruana played, so you should feel great about it. It's the world number number two or number three. I don't know. He's he's very high up in the ratings. Uh, so 
Yeah, great if you can follow in Caruana's footsteps. Nobody is following completely. Okay, a lot of people are following in Caruana's footsteps. So who is following in Stockfish's footsteps? Uh, nobody. Okay, I see. It was more difficult, right? Yeah, usually that happens, right? The computers, they play moves, which are difficult to understand. But if you look at the position, you can see probably where white is weakest. White's weakest spot. What, what, what might that be? So, uh, Inari, you're closest. Inari is the only student who got the first move. Aha. That's right. So, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. So, we could play in different ways here, right? White is a little exposed in the center, and they're also a little exposed on the queen side, right? Um, but if you look at black's pieces, you could say that black actually has perhaps more pieces directed at the... Uh, at the, at the king side, I, I would say, no, I would say. But okay, uh, that's general uh, thinking. So let's uh, let's do something here. Okay, we will request, re but we will start looking at the game. Caravana played the move c5. It's similar to what we looked at uh, before with the d5 break and so on. Caravana tried to open up the game for his pieces, but he's also weakening the light squares, right? So Neiman, uh, I think he took on c5, queen takes c5. And at this point, this was not so easy for white. It's a difficult position to play uh, at the board. So anyone, if you would have the white pieces, could you tell me two things? Now, at this moment, try not to write in the chat, all right? I'll ask you two questions here, two questions. Yeah, please don't write in the chat. One, uh, white, please don't write in the chat. White's weakest, weakest spot. Uh, and B, uh, white's best move. Uh, in relation to A, like what you answered on on A. So two questions, which is White's weakest spot? And question B, White's best move with relation to your answer on question one. All right. I hope you and me understand each other. Or this is completely uh, impossible to understand. Interesting. Yeah, kebabs, you're very close. You're very close. So he didn't play that in the game. He didn't play it. Aha, you're right, uh, L. You're right. Good point. Okay, so a lot of people. Yeah, thanks. You don't have to send me more answers, okay? Many of you noticed that e3 is probably white's weakest spot in this position. Uh, we would like to play something like bishop f3, uh, preparing rook e1 and so on. But then probably we're hanging this pawn and... We don't want to trade it for that pawn. The position opens and black gets a lot of counterplay. Aha. So actually, uh, it's a difficult position for white. But the best move is a move which protects this pawn. But it's very hard for a human to play this move. So guess what the computer wanted to play here? Aha. You're right, tactical. It wanted to play rook f3. So don't uh, don't be surprised that Niemann didn't play it because it's it's not a human move. It's a very strange move, but it works very well. You're protecting the weakest spot in your position. And if knight h4, you go rook g3. And as you can see here, now black should be very careful because suddenly also the rook is placed towards the g7 pawn. So that was difficult to see in the game. But had he played like that, uh, he would have some counterplay with white, actually. In the game, Niemann instead played the move g4 so he's gaining more space now it looks a little now like uh, the andrew tang example no now white is uh, exposing themselves a little more and caravana quickly put more pressure on on white and um, if i forced you to make a bishop move which bishop move would you make here anyone exactly gordon bishop a5 caravana also found it so now knight e4 is coming up coming up at some point so black got uh, the initiative in this game, they're full of queen d3 and pinning. Caravana hurried to take, brought the knight to e4. He played queen d4, starting infiltration. Later on, there was a move, rook a2, and black got the upper hand. However, had uh, Niemann instead played this strange move, rook f3, actually, it was not easy to see how to progress with black here. We have this strange plan with rook g3 and also we don't have to care about this pawn okay the position is very complex um so having said that having told you that rook f3 might be white's uh main idea here believe it or not 
uh, what do you think black should play? So let's see if anyone can come up with the right solution here. How can we infiltrate uh, White's camp? That's your mission, guys. Okay. Uh, Yugoslavian berserker, maybe, maybe I can take back, right, uh, Yugoslavian, but uh, I like your way of thinking. Yeah, you're close to the solution. Okay, who else? Torices. Oh, you play C5 again. Okay, don't get me wrong, guys. C5, that's Carvana's move. Fantastic, but we were looking for something else this time. Okay. Uh, I like Kebab and Metzamortis. You're very, very close. You're very close. Uh, there is a reason why I think you should do it the other way around. Yeah, this one was difficult, right? This one was very difficult. So basically, you got the idea right. Uh, I like Kebab, Mecha, Mortis, JM Chess, and Sui Random. You got the idea right, but uh, it needs to be improved, OK? There is a little detail that we have to fix. Inari the Husky, congratulations. Uh, you have followed in the footsteps of Stockfish. Not bad. So please go ahead, uh, Inari. Uh, show us how should black continue here. Knight h4. So, uh, why are we playing like this? Well, there is something going on over here. You can all see that we have this like in the pocket, no? And I mean, even psychologically, you're scaring uh, white a little now. They have to be careful about some trick. But that's not the main point. The main point is rather to control this square. We want to put something on f5. This knight is the piece which is like holding together white's position. So it's not letting us attack the pawn. So knight s4 is very strong. We're preparing to put something on f5. So white can not play rook f3 anymore, obviously. Um, if we play g4 in order to control the f5 square, I think there is a sacrifice. Anyone can see a sacrifice for black here? Anything which catches your eye? Aha, we can take on g4, exactly. We could start taking on uh, d4 so that they cannot use this knight in for defensive purposes. And then we can play bishop takes g4. Interesting. Somehow white is uh, in trouble. Pawn takes, knight takes. And I think we have a strong attack coming up. Um, yeah, why do I think that? King g1. Well, I'm not so sure anymore. Knight takes e3. Oh, really? So and if I go knight e5, what happens? I can't go for mate here or no, nothing's going on? Oh, rook takes e3. Oh, that's better, of course. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm a little tired. No, rook takes e3, of course, to play rook g3. Yeah, that's a very strong attack, for sure. The queen is ready to join also. So that could happen if white plays g4. Black has many pieces. It's not surprising that something will happen. So white's best move here probably to play bishop d3. So many of you were saying knight f5, and I think that's a very natural move. However, if you play knight f5, I can take and I can defend the pawn on e1. I'm just in time to defend, and I'm hoping in my best dreams to play e4 at some point. Uh, not so clear, not so clear. Don't forget that at some point this bishop can become very strong. So instead of playing knight f5, anyone, can you spot the difference here? Aha, we can go with the bishop instead. So what's the difference if we go with the, diff with, with the bishop, I mean? Sorry. Yeah, the difference is that when we go with the knight, they'll take once. And here uh, we have two pieces attacking e3, right? So they can defend it, I, I guess, with this rook, right? But if you go with the bishop instead, yeah, this is perhaps very... If it's very simple, sorry that I'm explaining it so much. But if you go with the bishop instead, once I take on f5, now you, when you take back, Let's say you take with a knight, I take back. Now I'm hitting e3 with three pieces. So you have to take on f5. And that's a major concession because now uh, e4 falls in my hands, right? So this is already difficult for, for white. Uh, we can put a knight on e4 and black will be clearly better in that position. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, I hope uh, <laughs> this was not too complex. Uh, you can play in both ways. Caravana's move c5, certainly a very good choice. That's one way in which we can weaken their pawn structure and uh, create more targets. You saw how he also played later on uh, bishop a5 and knight e4 and so on. Or you can play in the other way, the stockfish way, knight h4, 
getting ready to play bishop f5. Interesting, now that the computer wants to keep the knight because it sees that the knight is like smarter in this, in this structure. So that's how we can undermine white's uh, pawn, uh, white's space advantage. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this topic about the space disadvantage. Thanks, Chessable. Thanks, Chess Dojo. USCS, Greg Shahadi. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye-bye.